This video proposes a computational sequence for the PID control calculations. Some might say this is of no interest to a user. This is the domain of the process control system supplier. But understanding how the calculations are performed enhances one understanding of PID. Furthermore, some seem to find the difference equations more informative than differential equations. When the PID control equation is written in its usual form, the impression is that one would begin by individually computing the proportional term, the integral term, and the derivative term. These would be summed to obtain the controller output. Some attempt to understand P the PID control equation by understanding the contribution of each term. When pursuing such an approach, it would be helpful if a control system would display and perhaps trend each term. No commercial control system does this, nor will our simulator do it. Ever wonder why? No conventional pneumatic and electronic control systems implemented the computations in this manner. We know this from disassembling the hardware. How do digital controls perform the computation? Manufacturers generally do not share such details, and reverse compiling microcode is a challenging endeavor. Most digital control products evolve from a prior analog product line, leading to a strong suspicion that the computations are approached in a similar manner. And if the modes were computed individually and summed to obtain the controller output, surely someone would have come up with a bright idea of displaying the outputs of the individual modes. The computation sequence presented in this video follows the approach used in conventional analog controllers. However, there is a fundamental difference. The analog controllers solve differential equations. Digital controls require difference equations. The difference equations used in digital controls are approximations to the differential equations presented in previous videos. The difference equations are computed on a time interval known as the sampling time delta t. An iteration is one execution of the difference equations. The values computed on an iteration are designated by a subscript. Subscript n is the current iteration Subscript n minus 1 is the previous iter iteration. Subscript 0 is the first iteration following a switch to auto. If time 0 is the time the controller was switched to auto, then iteration n occurs at n times delta t. With today's processors, the norm is sampling times of 1 second or less. For the slow processes typical of the process industries, such sampling times do not introduce significant errors into the calculations. For digital controls, one should technically write difference equations, but with such good approximations, either differential equations or difference equations can be written. We can use the simulator to illustrate the values computed for the controller output for a sampling time of one second. Switch the hot air temperature controller to auto. Change the set point to 220 degrees Celsius. After a cycle or two, place the simulator in hold. Maximize the trend display. Then zoom in on smaller and smaller portions of the response for the controller output. Except for the proportional kick, associated with the set point change. The output changes by a small amount on a one second interval. The 
For this example, shorter sampling times would not improve loop performance. The present objective is to present a computational procedure for the basic PID control equations. Obtaining a practical computational procedure requires that additional issues be addressed. These will be mentioned, but the details will be deferred to subsequent videos. Step 1 involves retrieving the current value of the input configured for the PV. This obtains PV sub n. The value of the PV from the previous execution is PV sub n minus 1. The control calculations proceed as a sequence of steps, starting with derivative, then integral, and finally proportional. Step 2 computes the rate of change C sub n hat for the PV. The simplest approach is a finite difference approximation. DPV dt is the difference in PVs on successive sampling instance divided by delta t, and that is designated as C prime sub n. In practice, this simple approach is not satisfactory. A subsequent video will explain why and present a preferable approach. Step 3 computes the projected value C hat sub n as the current value of the PV, PV sub n, plus T sub d times the rate of change C hat sub n. Step 4 computes the control error and the projected control error E hat. This depends on the action of a controller. For reverse acting, E sub n is set point sub n times P minus PV sub n. E sub n hat is set point sub n minus C hat sub n. For derivative based on E, steps 2 through 4 are similar. Step 5 uses finite differences to integrate the control error E to compute a new value for M sub R sub N for the control output bias. Start with the differential form DM sub R DT equals K sub C E over T sub I for the integral mode equation. Approximate DM sub R DT using the finite difference expression M sub R N minus M sub R N minus 1 over delta t. Finally, solve for m sub r n. The new value m sub r sub n for the control output bias is obtained by adding k sub c e sub n delta t over t sub i to the previous value m sub r n minus 1. The initial condition is the value m sub r 0 computed for bumpless transfer. For the integral mode calculations, the finite difference approximation is acceptable. There seems to be no incentive to use better numerical approximations to compute the integral. A subsequent video explains an alternate implementation known as reset feedback for the integral mode. The calculations are based on the controller output M instead of the control error E. Another video examines integ integrating the projected control error E hat instead of the current error E. The result is a PID equation that is slightly different from the ones we have presented. Reset windup and reset windup protection are also deferred to a subsequent video. Under certain situations, the values computed for the controller output bias M sub R N can become very large, either positively or negatively. The result is known as reset windup. 
To prevent this from occurring, the computations must include logic known as reset windup protection. Step six is to apply the proportional plus bias equation based on E sub n hat to compute a new value for the controller output M sub n. The derivative mode calculations provide the value for the projected control error E hat sub n. The integral mode calculations provide the value for the controller output bias M sub r n. These are inserted into the proportional plus bias equation to compute the controller output M sub n. Based on this approach, some observe that integral and derivative work through proportional. The next video examines the alternatives for tuning coefficients.